So to start off, tell me what you see. It's a sheep human waifu hybrid creature thing. Okay. Is it a male sheep or is it a female sheep? Because if you said male, you're probably a zoologist or you've been through this argument before. What you're seeing is a domesticated Tsunomaki Watame, a Japanese VTuber from Hololive who does a variety content on YouTube. Uh, my name is uh, Watame Tsunomaki. My hobby is uh, share happy. And apparently, some people believe she or he is a man. Hi, I'm Thyme and I am a man. So is the sheep because it has horns. Only male sheep have horns. Watame has horns, therefore he is a man. Yes, flawless logic. Unfortunately though, this is called a pair of boobies. I don't know if you've seen one before, but they don't exactly grow on guys. So why is it that people are so fixated on the horns and not other features that accentuate her femininity, like her voice? In fact, I'll let her speak for herself on this matter. But time, guys can have boobs too. Never this big though. I could be wrong. This isn't just additional tissue. This is a pair of airbags. Also, what if I told you female sheep can have horns too? A lot of you probably already know this because the is Watame a guy question is a pretty old and tired one at this point, but I'd still like to revisit it because it gives me an excuse to make a short video about sheep and Watame because I really like her. Sheep refers to a genus called Ovis, which consists of seven species of animals. Six of these are mostly found in the wild and so tend to be referred to as wild sheep. One is found almost exclusively in pastures and farm environments, and as the name suggests, they are the kind of sheep that people typically domesticate. When people say sheep, they often refer to this kind of sheep and not the wild ones. Although there are only seven species, there are over 1,000 breeds of domesticated sheep alone, which means there are more breeds of sheep than any other livestock species other than poultry. By the way, a male sheep is called a ram, a female sheep is called an ewe, and a young sheep is called a lamb. Now, not all sheep are created equal. Some look like cows, some have rabbit ears, some can stand on two legs and play the harp. But in terms of their horns, most of the time they are exclusive to the rams. There are, however, some species where neither sex has horns, like the Devon Long Wool or the Derbyshire Gritstone. Hornless sheep, either through genes or because they're cut off, are called polled sheep. In some other breeds, both sexes have horns, which we'll get to later. From this, we might be able to tell what species Watame really is. But before we get into that, why does she even have horns? A lot of animals have horns. They use them mainly for fighting and mating. The first one should be pretty obvious. It's a weapon. It's strong and sharp and durable, and they can use it to ward off predators. Animals in open areas like the savanna benefit from this the most because they get to scare away other animals from far off. They also use horns to attract mating partners, hence the mating part. Watame here gets to pick who's the biggest gigachad by whoever has the biggest and hardest horns, or whoever uses their horns to do mating rituals like stripping tree barks and fighting other rams. This isn't the same for all horned animals though, so each to their own. Having horns also help cool off the body because blood runs through the horn, like a radiator. It's actually a bit weird for Watame to even have horns because she's a bipedal and her biggest self-defense weapon is arguably her arms. No bipedal animal has horns. It'd be unnatural for her to use her head instead of her arms to attack or defend herself. You can make the argument that she can still use them to stab things and hit things because they're solid and sharp. But holding an actual weapon like a spear or rock with her hands would be much more effective. 
and if he can't find a rock, he can literally just hold up a fist and punch you in the face. So it's likely her horns are evolutionary leftovers, and her line of ancestors used to be quadrupedal, like actual sheep, where having horns makes more sense for combat. Either that, or she still actively uses them for mating. Not sure what her mating rituals are exactly, but it might be a personal matter, so let's stay away from that. While we're on the topic of horns, people prefer to breed their sheep pulled or cut off their horns so they'd be less likely to hurt themselves, other livestock, and humans. They'd cause less damage on infrastructure, and it also means they need less space in feed yards and transport. Cutting off the horn may or may not be painful depending on where you cut. Most of the time, this is what it looks like. The internet has you believe horns are hollow. This is not entirely true. The outer part is hollow. This is the horny layer, the part Vikings used to hold beer. It's entirely made of keratin, like your nails, or the hoof of a cow. It is also entirely dead. Below that is a thin layer of skin that produces this keratin, and below that is the bony core. This core is basically a part of the skull that juts outwards. Because it's a bone, it's filled with blood vessels and nerves, much like the skin over it. Cutting this part would cause bleeding, especially if you cut low enough where the cavity called the frontal sinus is exposed, it could cause infections. Watame will not feel you touching her horn, but she can tell if you're pulling on it. If you've ever wondered if sawing it off would hurt her, the answer is yes, very. That is, if you cut low enough that you reach the skin and bony core. Even if the horns are useless, cutting it off now would be a bit too late, even with anesthetics. Vets advise not to completely dehorn livestock that are already mature. Instead, you can prevent the horn from growing when they were still young. This process is called disbudding. It's usually done to lambs when they're below one or two weeks old, when it's least painful for them. It involves giving them anesthesia, then cauterizing their horn buds with caustic paste or hot iron. Okay, Thyme, this is good and all, but can we really tell what species Watame is just from her having horns? Well, there aren't that many species of sheep where the ewe can have horns. Here are some of them. I'm sure there are more, but definitely not that many. Now, Watame is from Japan. Sheep are pretty rare in Japan. It's estimated that there are less than 20,000 of them as of the making of this video, and they're mainly consumed for the meat, not the wool. The most common breed in Japan is the Suffolk sheep, but they're pulled and black-faced. Watame is horned, and presumably she's white-faced. In fact, we can cross out the breeds on this list that don't have white on their faces. While we're at it, we can also cross out the Raka because their horns are unique and definitely not like Watame. As far as I know, none of these breeds are native to Japan, so Watame's ancestors may have originally come from another country. Sheep farming only started in Japan during the Meiji era, when westernization began and it was endorsed. They started importing a bunch of sheep, and by the end of the 1950s, the numbers rose to about a million sheep. It started declining after that, and now only 0.01% of them are left. If Watame grew up or is currently living in Japan, and assuming her life expectancy is the same as a sheep's, her great-great-great-great-grandparents were likely born abroad and were part of this mass import. Speaking of life expectancy, sheep have an average lifespan of 10 to 12 years, with 20 years max in captive. Watame has a human body, but the life cycle of sheep. So she ages roughly six times faster than a human. She was four years old when he debuted, or roughly 24 human years old, and as of the making of this video, she has aged about 15 years since then. And she's expected to last another four to 13 years. Then again, she can always respawn after eight seconds, maybe. Makata, makata. Watame wa. Tabe rane temo. Hachibi o de. Response surunda yo.
Nani? Anyway, I, I'll be honest. I've actually been stalling this whole time. That's because I have no idea which of these sheep Iwatame is. This was more difficult than determining the type of shark Gura was. Technically, all of them are able to live in Japan, given proper care and placement. Some people say Japan is either too hot or too humid to properly raise sheep, but these parameters can vary greatly from north to south. Personally, I think she's an undocumented crossbreed between the Jacob sheep and the Dorset horn. Watame's horns have the color of a Jacob sheep's and the curl of a Dorset horn's. She has the size of a Jacob sheep and the skin color of a Dorset horn. Both these sheep are known for their attentiveness and mothering ability. I also think it's pretty poetic that a sheep figure holding a harp reminiscent of the biblical figure David is bred from a species of sheep named after another biblical figure, Jacob. People seem to think she could be a bighorn sheep too, although I think the Dorset horn fits better in terms of their looks, size, and horn shape. Tell me which sheep you think looks most like Watame in the comments. Maybe I'm just missing something. And while you're at it, give this video a like if you like it. Maybe even subscribe. There's one more thing I want to talk about. Could this be Watame's sister? As in, can Watame, who has horns, have siblings who are polled? In fact, do her parents have to be horned too? Well, it's all in the genes. Let's learn about genetic traits for a bit. Genes are located in chromosomes, which are located inside all cell nuclei of an animal. Chromosomes are these thread-like structures made up entirely of DNA. They usually come in pairs, forming an X. Humans have 23 pairs, sheep have 27. Each chromosome contains hundreds to thousands of genes, and each of these genes determine a specific trait of the animal. The gene uppercase P determines if the sheep is pulled, and it's a dominant gene. Gene lowercase p determines if the sheep is horned, and it's a recessive gene. Since genes come in pairs, if the sheep's chromosome has genes big P, big P, it'll be pulled. If big P, small p, it'll still be pulled, because big P is the dominant gene, and if it's small p, small p, it'll be horned. When a lamb is born, they take only one gene of each pair from each parent. Which gene they take is up to chance. If both parents have genes big P, small p, there's a 75% chance they'll be pulled and 25% chance they'll be horned. Remember, you need small pp to be horned, kind of like the body's compensating for something. This is ridiculously simplified, though. In reality, P works slightly differently, and there are a lot more genes that determine if a sheep is horned or polled. For instance, if a sheep has genes big P, small p, big H, big H, small SC, SC, big ha, small ha, the sheep would be horned, even though it has a big P. By the way, this is called a genotype, a set of genes that determine the trait that shows on the animal otherwise known as a phenotype. In conclusion, for Watame to be horned, typically at least one of her parents need to be horned, and it's entirely possible and actually more likely for her siblings to be pulled. If she is a Jacob sheep though, they are almost always horned. This is because when both parents are horned, it's almost a guarantee that the lamb is also horned. This means that if one or more of Watame's siblings are polled, it's very likely that only one of her parents are actually horned. So yes, Watame is a girl. But let's be honest, who gives a sheep? She's a good, earnest person. And she's very entertaining. Also, if she still eats like a sheep, then she's still a ruminant, meaning... She's herbivorous and has four stomachs. Actually, one stomach with four chambers. She'd burp a lot and sometimes regurgitate food to rechew them. 
This doesn't seem the case though, since her body doesn't look like it fits a big stomach, and she still has upper teeth. Sheep don't, so she's likely omnivorous, and not a grazer like her kind. Also, sheep eyes are rectangular with up to 320 degrees of vision. Watame's eyes are binocular and round, so she's exhibiting more hunter than hunted properties. Not sure what caused this sort of evolution, could be magic, could be science beyond our understanding. But hey, that's all I have for you for today. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to suggest me topics for my next video in the comments or on my Twitter. I got so much love in my previous video, so I hope you enjoyed this one too. See you guys next time. Bye!